Well, it's almost been a week since I last showed you the Marconi. Well, at least five days. So I thought I'd start this other part and show you what progress has been made since then. I've uh, completely cleaned the chassis now, uh, which did involve removing the tuning capacitor and the dial and a few of the tubes and the covers, of course. I just cleaned everything. And I've just finished reassembling it again. Uh, all apart from the dial, I still need to give that a good clean. It's uh, important that I take my time with the dial because a replacement is just isn't an option. But before I show you the chassis, I want to show you this. Now, some of you know that I come from a mechanical background. In that aspect, I repair antique clocks. And I wanted to show you this switch, which is, a matter of fact, the switch that goes on the front, it's the tuner. And it's mounted on this plate here, you can see the fine and coarse tune. Uh, it mounts on the front of the chassis. It's cleaned up really good too, I didn't paint this. This is all original. You see there's still some scratching on it. But all original. And the reason I want to show you this is because of the mechanics behind it. Now we know that most radios it's became extremely common for them to use dial cord. In my opinion, dial cord was just laziness. But of course I'm going to say that because I really enjoy working on clockwork mechanisms. This clockwork mechanism is what runs a variable tuning capacitor. And you can see that I've cleaned it. It's all clean now but I've left the brass with the patino. I don't want to remove any originality from this set. Uh, I, I just don't see the purpose in fully restoring a set from the fairies when it's in relatively good condition and in some cases it could devalue the set. As long as the set functions well and plays well and looks good at the same time without being fully restored I don't see the purpose in doing that. Now you can see that instead of having dial cord it was a gear run mechanism and as I turn the uh, the tuner it would gradually turn that that um, half half moon half disc shape now the shaft of that mounts to the variable tuning capacitor two, two grub screws so I put those in and of course on the front the tuner then goes through here and it's also tightened with some screws. I cleaned it all, put some new oil on it and it's looking really good. And I thought I'd just show you this because I'd never seen this sort of a idea of how it works. So some after some careful cleaning this is what I've came back to. The chassis has its original plating, but you can see it's pitted in areas. It's not perfect by any means. But I like to think that looking from the back of the, the radio itself, that looks rather good. Now, one thing I got wrong uh, when I first showed this set was I said, look at its amazing original gold paint. Well, as I began to clean it, I realized that wasn't gold paint. That was actually just grime. I had dusted this set before I showed it on the first video, however I never realized that all over the set was just a, a covering of grime, yellow grime which had covered everything. The only thing which actually was originally gold, or had a gold um, plating to them, was the heat shield covers. And after cleaning them, it was clear that that had almost all came off. So what I'd done is I painted them with acrylic gold paint and they look really good. It, this paint is such a good quality. Uh, it was expensive but it was well worth it in my opinion. I also polished up the uh, coil covers. I had those off and cleaned the coils, those were really dirty. And these clean like this by hand. There was no brass or nothing involved. That's just natural cleaning. Transformer, 
the black paint on that is still well, pristine. And I've put some of the valves back in just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. You can see the gold valve there. Now that actually isn't original to the set. It's an equivalent to what one of one's been there. And of course, the original heat shield cover for it isn't there because when the repairer replaced that valve, he was unable to put the heat shield cover back on. So he therefore threw the heat shield cover and put that nice gold valve in. But I don't think that detracts too much because it's the same colour as the heat shield, so... Plus, finding one of those would be rather difficult. And also, something else I want to show... Uh, that I couldn't show last time. For those of you wondering what this big square on the, uh, the radio chassis was, it's actually the uh, electrolytic capacitors. And within it is 1, 8 and 4, 4 microfarad capacitors. And that's why that uh, replacement one in the bottom was put in there. Obviously the 8 and perhaps one of the 4s went. So he just snipped those wires and stuck that in there. Now after all your comments I decided we're going to keep that in there uh, and restuff it. So when I come to restuff this one, all I'll do is put the 4s back in and leave the 8 out, putting the 8 back in the one below. And that way it's easier to restuff this and we get to keep that original feature. This is the only valve that's missing and the uh, the valve that goes in here, we've also removed that. That's the Magic Eye Tuner that goes in there. And this is the output valve. What I'm looking for is a KT42 because when I removed that it rattles terribly. You move it about and you can hear everything rattling about inside there. Uh, plus it had electrical tape around it. I think I might have mentioned that. So, big no-no. I've also ordered a new one of those. So, that is what we're dealing with at the moment. I mean, I'm, you see the original plating is, isn't perfect by any means, but I think this set is going to look superb when it's back in the cabinet. So what I now want to do is, and I want to let you see me put this back on and perhaps show you again how it works. Because uh, I really like this thing. Uh, obviously because it involves gears, but that's just me. Now that tuner plate I showed you fits under the front of the chassis here. And this is a variable tuning capacitor obviously with these two supporting shafts. Now these two supporting shafts are what locks the plate obviously on the front and then once those are locked the shaft should then line up with the switch. That's the idea. There's also a small area of the chassis which has been removed and that's to help compensate for the gears. The small disc here, which turns obviously the wheel, then this gear here, has to fit in, otherwise it would rub off the chassis and cause lots of problems. So the idea is, when these two shafts fit into this hole and this hole here, this should line up and simply slot on and then it can be put on with two screws. And that therefore makes this entire mechanism turn the variable tuning capacitor. So first of all, I'm just going to line those two areas up and then push it on. Now that's going to hold on, but we also have to put some uh, washers and nuts on to secure it in place. So I'm simply placing a washer on each shaft and then putting the nuts on. I'll just be putting them on finger tight just now because I've got a tool which will tighten them right up for me. Not all easy to put on. 
See, I'm just simply going to tighten that up. Move the camera over slightly. That tightens that one on. So that's it now secure by those two knots. And in order for this mechanism to now power this uh, variable tuning capacitor, I need to put in two small screws, which you can see there. Once I put the two of those in, this entire mechanism will then power the variable tuning capacitor. And for those who didn't quite understand what I was meaning, you can see that the shaft's held on by two screws. So now that I've tightened that one, I should be able to turn the tuning capacitor like so in order to reach the other screw, which I then tighten. And by doing that, the variable tuning capacitor has now been driven by the gear mechanism. And there isn't even a piece of dial string in sight. I like that. Since I'm currently filming this area of the chassis, I thought I'd show you how the uh, dial needle goes on, the pointer. That follows the, the same idea as the last one did, with a simple shaft and screw. And instead of just pulling off, like in other radios, you know, we're used to just pulling that thing off. This also uses a shaft which slots in through that shaft and then by tightening this the small screw on top quite tight it's then uh, held in place and you can both fine tune and coarse tune and that's how the, the needle works so that's me just showed you how this entire variable tuning capacitor area of the chassis works so I'm going to end up cutting the video here folks, thanks for watching, uh, I hope you're as delighted with the chassis as I am, as I said I'm not doing a full restoration on this one because I think it would be too much of a waste. Uh, please do let me know what you think of the chassis, I've tried my best on it and taken my time, hopefully next vid we're going to be, uh, well, Hopefully my next video will be on the Ultra Electric. I want to try and get that finished up. I'm still waiting on a valve in the post. And I was speaking to Howard on the Antique Radio Forum and he seems to think that I should replace resistor 16 in it. I'll go through that with you when I get the video up. So that will be two jobs before we can get the Ultra playing again. I hope to get the valve tomorrow or maybe the next day. So that should wrap up things on that restoration. As for this one, the next video will hopefully be recapping.